Today we're going to be talking about 3D forms. Forms are what we call shapes that are three-dimensional. They can stay up on their own and we're going to make ice cream cones. So think of a two-dimensional circle in a form. We call it three-dimensional a sphere. This is like a sphere with the ice cream part at the bottom. Or actually it's more like a half circle. We think of a rectangle. When you make it 3D, it turns into a cylinder. This is a cylinder. It can stand up on its own. The triangle then goes into a cone. So for our ice cream, we're going to make our, we're going to take our cylinder, which is our cylinder, our toilet paper tube, and we're going to crunch up our paper. But if you've had an ice cream cone, you know it's not an empty cone. Hopefully it's not. With just the ice cream push on top, usually they kind of smash the ice cream down in. That's what we're going to do. You're going to gently then take your paper, put your hand in it, and kind of form, kind of form your sphere. And we're going to twist the bottom and we're going to stick it down in. This is to make it stand up, hopefully. And just stick it down in there. That's, there's more than one way to do that, but somehow crunch it up and push the end down in. I want you to do this on your own. I'm not doing this for you. You can experiment and try with the best way to do this. Now right now, it doesn't look much like a cone. And it's really not a very big ice cream scoop. I would not want to, I would not be happy if I got a cone like that, would you? So we were we want to make we want to make our sphere, but we want to make it look like how the ice cream gets a little smashed when you put it together at the end. So I'm going to take another piece and again, I'm not going to smash it as flat as I can. I'm not going like this. That is not what we do. We can be gentle with our paper. We can take it and gently, because you want it to be, you still want it to be kind of big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to take the ends and curl them under like this. And you might have to experiment to get it the way you want it. And that is okay. You can put your fist in it maybe and kind of put it around your fist and then put it on your cone. It does not have to be perfect. It can be a little sloppy. It can be a little messy. It's okay. And then I'm going to have tape at your desk. Table. I'm going to come around with tape. And you get two pieces of tape per scoop. No more. You don't need more. I go over the top. Oh, I ran a little short. That's okay. If you run short like that, what you do is you just take, tear it off, make it work. You take tape to go this way, and I'm just going to put it down like that. Another scoop the same way. So I'm going to take my paper, and I'm not smashing it as flat as I can. I'm taking the edges, and I'm just going to roll it up like this, and I put my fist inside of it and shape my kind of like my half sphere there and I'm going to put my next scoop on and I'm going to tape it on. Now I have my cone. I know it doesn't look much like an ice cream cone yet. The challenge is to try and get it to balance. So if it falls over in one direction you maybe need to add weight to the other side. Now I'm going to do my paper mache. You need to keep do your this may be different from how you've done paper mache before. You'll need two fingers. Go ahead and take Show me two fingers, dip your two fingers in, and you're gonna spread it over. Don't do the whole thing, just a part of it. Then you're gonna take a paper strip, already have some twine, just one, and you're gonna put it on. So the paper mache paste, what this does is it, it hardens, and then you get um, kind of a nice firm surface to paint on. And then you're gonna go over and coat the top of it. Make sure you get it all, and, and when you go underneath, you can just tuck it under there. Make sure you coat it completely with the paste and then you go on to your next strip. And you're going to go around a couple different directions. So we're going to go around one way and then when we've got this direction then we're going to go the other way. Now I have the strips going mostly one way, saw some gaps. It looks like a mess, doesn't it? That's okay. That's what it's going to look like now. It should still be pretty well covered so you don't really need to put more paste on until after you put the paper. So you're going to put, now I'm going to go around this way. Now I'm going to take my two, by this time I've kind of got it over my hand, it just kind of happens. If you don't want to get too messy, just 
try and keep it on two fingers. If it gets on your hand, it's fine. If you want to in between, you can use the rag to wipe it off. We're not getting up to use the sink until we are completely done. That means you wash your hands and you are done with paper mache for the rest of class. So some of you will finish today. Some of you probably will not finish till next week and that's okay. Now, mine is mostly done. It still stands up. I still wanna go over and just make sure that everything is thoroughly coated with my paper mache. And I also wanna fill in any little holes that I might have. And for that, you can tear the paper into little tiny pieces if you want and go over it. It still is pretty lumpy. And you know what, that's okay. Cause next week is the fun part. Next week is where we get to put on the textured paint. It's gonna be kind of a, kind of a puppy kind of paint to make it look realistic.